One of the curious things about the world before Corona was that growth rates, particularly amongst the so-called developed economies, were in secular decline. So much so that we had this disconnect where stock markets were booming everywhere. Bye, bye, bye. Yes, demand for money. Bye, bye, bye. Demand for homes. Yet wages were stagnant. The general feeling of prosperity for many populations was shrinking. And we saw this with the populist reaction and all the rest. Donald Trump says he's a champion of the middle class and will get people back to work. That's the whole point of his campaign, he says. So let's try and think systematically about this. How exactly do countries or economies tickle the underlying components of GVA, gross value added, to get GDP? Europeans basically, they are open economies. It means that most of your growth comes from external sources. You're heavily export dependent. So if you have Greece, it's beaches, a service is export. If you're Germany, it's the auto sector selling cars around the world. Open economies tend to have bigger welfare states. It's a type of shock absorber. When you're hit with something like Corona, which is simultaneously demand and supply shock, they still have those infrastructures in place. The United States is part of the global economy and does a little bit of everything and is primarily driven by consumption. We are really only about 30% export dependent. U.S. economy right now more dependent on consumer spending than it has been in years. The basic growth model does not allow you to slow down and sequester the economy for six months. Now, 30 million unemployment claims since this started. This is the most rapid economic contraction probably in the history of the world. We had no shock absorbers. We didn't know where the next bump in the road was going to come from, but we did know that the tools to deal with it were really not there. The analogy I like to use for this is the United States is basically a six liter Mustang GT. It just screams America. So long as it's heading in a straight line and so long as all the components are perfectly aligned and everything is working great, it's amazing. But if you try and stop it suddenly, everything flies off. If it has to do lockdowns, if it has to do partial openings, if it has to do restarts over the next few months, it's a disaster. But if you open up the economy and try and restart it all at once, you destroy your health system, which is 20% of US GDP. Europe, on the other hand, Europe's a bit like a Volvo. Every Volvo has six steel pillars, like this. It's got airbags everywhere. It's really comfortable. If you have to sleep in it for six months, you can. And if you crash in it, you'll probably live. Here's what I've been thinking. Of. What's the one thing when you think of Volvo that comes to mind? Safety. Exactly. The rich economies with large welfare states have a particular set of Volvo-like absorbers. It costs a lot of money to run these things like it does to run a Volvo. I know I've got one. And most of the time, we don't need these institutions. Most of the time, you don't drive with earbuds. You don't even think about the earbuds. But you're very grateful when you have that crash. And you see this in the European response. What do you do? You backstop the banks and you say, keep paying wages. Just keep doing it. Pay it at 80%. We basically just decided not to do that. The United States, the minute it hits a bump in the road, you're dead. There's no equivalent set of institutions. Now, what is it the Congress is doing? They're making damn sure that the financial power of the state is being used to bail out the corporate sector. What did the Senate majority fight for? One of the largest corporate bailouts with as few strings as possible in American history. Because the Fed, all the way through from the financial crisis right to the present, kept basically interest rates very, very low. And that meant so long as corporates were in positive growth territory, they could issue tons of debt and do lots of stock buybacks. $5.3 trillion into repurchasing their own shares. And now all those debts have gone and went, Arrgh! it's the Fed's job to buy them. They're buying steaming piles of corporate junk. So essentially, they shower money on the corporate sector. The Fed puts in a floor on their asset prices. They're all fine. Now, over here, we've got American people. They're getting checks. Why are we telling people to go sign on to unemployment systems when we haven't invested in government for over 40 years, tax cut after tax cut after tax cut? So that when people go there, the entire system of Florida's benefits have collapsed. 40% of all Americans would have trouble getting 400 bucks together in an emergency. Well, that 400 bucks is gone. Look at the food bank lines, for God's sake. Five miles in some places, right? They're desperate. This place is in crisis point. 
and we're still kind of behaving as if it's okay and we'll be getting back to work soon. We've basically stripped all the airbags out, turbocharged the engine and went Yahoo. Now there's one big airbag at the front, what you see with the bailouts, and you know who that's for. My fear is that we crash the Mustang and we try and restart the engine three or four times before we realize we need to build a Volvo. 